to set it up. I'm still dealing with tech um, after 94 interviews as well. I just keep <laughs> dealing with setting up etc. and the echo and it's just going to load. And we will be live for just give me one second. It's all going to go up. I, I wish I was tech. Uh, and it's just, yeah. There we go. There we go. The countdown has begun. 91, 92, 93, 94. Uh, we are live and good evening from India. I know a lot of you are waking up. I had just sent a message uh, across that all of us must must see the last um, interview till 100. And it's uh, immense pleasure to yet. We didn't have a chef yet. We had scientists, we had Air Force officers, we had, um, we had actors, she's an actor as well, but we, like her passion for food, her whole thing towards the way she shows up for cooking is so beautiful. And now we have a chef as well um, in our big basket of 100 mums. Apart from being a mom, Maria, welcome to the book. It's a pleasure introducing you to the world as a mom. And we will have a little conversation about you being a mom. And I always say this, that mothers who live their story tell their story the best. But before we go on to you as a mom, um, please introduce yourself. There's an international audience who sees replays. They all want to know who you are and just go ahead and tell your journey. And then we go on with questions, which are not going to be too many, but we will. Okay, so uh, hi everyone. My name is Maria Goretti. Um, I did start as a chef. I actually started the entire journey as a student of fashion design. Wow. Then learn jazz dancing. Uh, from there, I joined MTV and I was uh, an MTV VJ in India for five and a half years. Uh, I did cricket. Um, I covered uh, the World Cup uh, in 2003 from Africa and in 2002 from um, Sri Lanka. Uh, then I became a mom in 2000. And I think uh, once I became Mom, I wanted to kind of stay home and savor every moment. That's what I did. Uh, I started learning to cook because I realized I didn't know how to and I had to feed my kids. And uh, just, you know, I just, I became obsessed about it and I wanted to learn more and do more. And then in 2011, I went to uh, Tante Marie, which is a culinary school in the UK. It's a school in Woking. It's a Gordon Ramsay holding. And uh, I learned cuisine. I learned boulangerie. And I learned bakery there. I came back and uh, I started writing a blog simultaneously. And uh, I used to put out recipes, put out videos. Um, from the sun's 17 and a half. That's okay. My children keep coming and dropping my lights. <laughs> the lights. That's okay. This is uh, all allowed. Yeah. Then uh, I continued. Uh, blogging and I continued writing and I, I started writing poetry somewhere in 2011 and uh, then I, I I seamlessly got into doing television shows back again on on TV but this time in the in my new avatar of being a chef and um, I released a book in 2016 called From My Kitchen to Yours and it won the Gourmand in 2017 uh, 16 or 17 so I think 17 and uh, yeah, I, I've just been dabbling with all of this. And right now, in fact, I've just finished uh, putting my dotting eyes and crossing my T's for my poetry book, which should release somewhere this year. And uh, otherwise, uh, yeah, this is all that I do. And <laughs> it's very, <laughs> you know, uh, very nicely you always say, this is all we do. And then we do so much. And then we just say that, that we're just a mom. But again, you know, and because this is a candid chat, we were talking and we said, what's the story? That's the story. You became a chef after you became a mom. Yeah. Um, today's today's mom, um, you know, in the morning, Sharez was there. And uh, when she became pregnant at the age of 18, she said, my child saved my life because I became pregnant. And she decided to come out of uh, a life that she was carrying on, um, you know. So our children do a lot of things to us. Yes. And we don't even realize what they've done to us. And there it is that uh, your children brought this this thing that you were meant to be a chef. And now poetry is going to come out of them as well, I know. 
because we've had the conversation about uh, uh, I still remember the umbilical cord is still not cut and yeah. <laughs> I, told you, I told you that that's that's the poem uh, right there uh, of a mom that must be written uh, yeah. and uh, and we're very proud of you uh, uh, Maria with this this is very hard and people really love you you know that people are very very fond of seeing your kitchen whoever I've told Maria is coming in book are also very glad because they watch your kitchen stuff and now to know that you just you know one day decided I don't know how to cook I'm a mom so that's how it happens to women you know there is and one day we become a mom like that's how everybody says it was going on and one day I become a mom and then the second part and the second phase of your life starts yeah yeah it does and it's very it's very interesting how beautifully and organically it all works out yes it does it does um and uh, in your journey as a mom uh, uh, uh you know you've been dedicating yourself you said totally up and down and i still see it i still see it i call you and then you're running around and just today this new drive you have to go to the school this is first year school and running out doesn't end and just two minutes before also it was not ending even for me I think I was just also like just doing something before I was coming and sitting here so what is this that your children have brought to your life and how it changed uh, post and um, we would definitely want to talk to you about the chef journey uh, which is beautiful as well <coughs> your, um, yeah. sorry my there's a call I don't know why a call can come through while you're on a Zoom call, but I, I don't understand this technicality <laughs> any which way. Yeah. So uh, basically, um, you know, I, I think it's been quite a quite a beautiful journey. Being a mom is like because there's always something that you keep learning or you have to keep unlearning and, and you know, learning a new way. And I think that kind of keeps you on your and uh, it's of your child's life uh, today I'm actually getting a lot of a lot of time to do draw what I want to do but uh, in a funny way uh, you can't ever you know you your your umbilical cord like I talked to you about is still not cut you know and that's I don't know I mean from the kids side they all want to fly and be independent I think it's it's me it's me still holding on so I think it's that <laughs> all of us are like that, and uh, especially in India. I mean, and my father was my father's mother who passed away at 83 also felt the umbilical cord was not cut at 83 for him, for her. You know, my grandmother still I remember I used to call my father and he used to come back and she used to say, Don't jump on his bed, you know, poor guy is going to be tired. I'm like, Your son, like, you're 83 years old, I'm sure your son is older than that. And we are very old, like, we, we were in our 20s, and my grandma was still scolding us because. The son has to come back. So that's the thing of the mom, you know. And just today I was in a mastermind um, with a group and I had a it's a it was a beautiful moment because there were seven, eight uh, women in the mastermind, only one man. And then he raised his hand and he said, My mom is no more, but my mom's story must be in this book. Will you take her in? And there were tears in his eyes and I said yes in one second. I said yes. I had the ninety-eight spot empty and you will your mom and then the whole room including me were crying because there was a son who really wanted to honor his mom who's passed away as well and but he still thinks this book will honor her and that's the that's the cord that we still all have mother is such a, a thing that we've been bringing and we've also had an air force officer i keep telling the story who took her child to Ladakh when was, she's was two years old and you're talking about umbilical cord and you have to hear this because Sangeeta took uh, her child uh, to Ladakh when he was two years old because she didn't want to leave him back in the city. And she's an Air Force officer. Both the husbands were uh, posted in Ladakh. And in 1980s, Ladakh was not the Ladakh it is today. It was the mud houses. And when she tells me that her child ate potato lentils and rice for two years because there was no food except that, and they managed a pressure cooker. And she would leave her child to the bachelor's and go for patrolling and sometimes even roll him in minus 20 degrees in the blanket and put it in the jeep behind for patrolling at the borders. When you hear a story like that of a oh. mom, you talk about the umbilical cord, she decided to do that. She said, I'm not leaving him away for two years. If I'm going to be there, 
he's going to be with me and i brought in the son in the interview and he's 26 now and they they had a they they had a conversation oh. it, was, uh, it was amazing so uh, uh maria this also is all about self-portrait i was telling you about self-portrait and you are with camera all the time do you also feel that I wish the camera was not there. Do you ever felt that? Because you've been embracing camera forever. So to know that self-portrait, uh, what, what's your view around self-portraits uh, since you've been embracing the camera for almost 20 years now, I think? Uh, 25. Yeah, 25 years, yeah. We've been seeing it for 25 yeah. years. Uh, yeah. yeah. I think I, I first got in camera when I was about 18. Yeah. Yeah. We've been watching you for that long. So yeah. uh, once you became a mom, did you see a shift? Did you see that things shifted for you? Did you feel um, that because most of us feel that we're not the same, we physically change and you have a message um, which I was talking about, the tummies are, all tummies are good. So we will talk about that because that's the message which all of us really need to hear. So what do you have to say about that? The shift of the camera thing because you've been in, ca on, in front of the camera forever. And, uh, yeah. So the thing is, uh, for me, for me, when I when I face camera, it is it's a job. You know, I don't take it uh, any other thing but a job and a job that's visible to everyone. All of us do various kinds of work in our life. Some of us do it uh, not in front of a camera, uh, and some of us do it in front of a camera. But all of us do uh, a lot of stuff in our life. And uh, the thing is, uh, I, I knew very early that uh, this is a job. It doesn't make me any special from the, from the next person who is probably the camera person. You know? uh, and today, I mean, it's, uh, or my sound recordist or my anyone else or, or the person who is getting me my water or the person who's prepping my food or, you know, or the person who my clothes, do my makeup. You know, just because they are not in front of the camera does not mean that uh, they what they do is not as special as I do. So that is something that I knew from really long back. So I never have ne never looked at it and uh, never looked at it and felt like, oh my God, what I do is really special. And you know, I, I never felt like that. I felt okay. We all have a job. We all need, and we all do it. We all do it together, and we do it together. You know, and if going to if you're going to move forward then we all move forward together and i completely feel that at all times uh having said that yes today when i look at myself on camera i look very different from what i used to look on camera 25 years ago and, and that's that's only normal i mean if i still look the same there'd be something something weird about it right, right. so no, I'm, so, yeah. I'm talking more in the sense of the shift that happens when we are not moms and then we become moms there's always a shift happening yeah it's an image and usually we uh, start noticing things that we probably would have not noticed before we were mom and some things get exaggerated, some things change, some things become beautiful and a lot of shift happens. And then you came up uh, in the cover of Cosmopolitan with all tummies are good. You yeah. Know? And that's the self-image embracing that even this book is bringing out that irrespective of trauma, whatever's happened, you're busy, what not busy, you know, we have to embrace self-portrait and move forward with our stories, embrace yeah. it it visually and I want you to talk about that because that's a that's that's one message which all mothers the minute you have the baby the tummy is the first thing that everyone's like oh god these stretch marks and these these things and um, the fat and the stitches and all that that happens to all of us so yes. that message uh, how did that come about and all tummies are good so Actually, something that was done by cosmopolitan it had nothing to do with me per se. They just asked me to be part of it and wanted to know if I'd be comfortable enough to be doing a photograph like that. And I, my first instinct was yes. Okay. Uh, after I, after I did say yes, uh, like five days before the shoot, I, I actually had cold feet. I was like, what am I doing? Have I, I've never done photographs like this before. I mean, uh, I was not sure, but I've always been very comfortable with my body. And the fact of the matter is, yes, if your 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 change when you have a baby. I remember my yoga teacher told me once, uh, I, have a, I have a picture actually of me at MTV where I was wearing a small crop top and a pair of jeans that were low slung. And that's the only other photograph I have with my exposed tummy. And I remember uh, she asked me once while I was doing my yoga with her, she asked me, she said, do you have a photograph of you with uh, your tummy? So I said, 
I was thinking, I don't know, I don't know. Then I said, yeah, yeah, I have one. She said, keep it very safe because your tummy is never going to look the same. So I was like, okay, you know, but I really didn't understand what she was saying because I was not a mom then. And I realized the first time around when I had, when I had Zeke, my body came back to what it was immediately. Not, I mean, immediately, immediately means it took nine months to come back to what I was rather than uh, fast. There's no faster than that. That's how much of time it takes. And uh, I remember after I, my second baby is when I realized that my whole body actually changed. It changed at that time. It did not change during the first baby, but it changed after Zeni. And uh, the good thing is that I never thought it was uh, not a nice thing or I didn't feel less about my body or um, have all those thoughts in my head. You know, I just didn't. So somehow I was very accepting of whatever my body, you know. Yeah, I, I never thought that I need to, I need to look exactly my, like I need to have abs. I don't have abs. I've never had them. Okay. So I'm, I'm not going to have them. I'm not somebody who, who works out in a gym three hours or you know eats carbless food or have sugar or I'm not one of them and uh, I love I love I love I love, I love being comfortable in my skin and I love being comfortable in the clothes that I wear and how I feel and I think and I think that you know something that all of us today, all of us moms, all of us women, forget even if you're not a mom, even if you're a woman, age changes your body. And I think you need to be accepting of it. I'm not saying you need to just, you know, uh, give up on life and just uh, not look after yourself. Of course, you must look after yourself. But you can't go so nuts about it. That's it's affecting you emotionally and spiritually and psychologically. You know, you have to also have your. You have to also be practical about things in life, and I think if you can kick that practicality into your life, that it becomes easier to deal with everything, and it, you have to be more accepting of what it is, right. and then you you you're fine. Yeah, yeah, and and uh, you know, it's just interesting that I've started the whole self portrait movement across the world, and I do port I do workshops around self portrait. And uh, it's becoming a tool of transformation. When I started talking about it, people were just like, how can it transform? When we spend five days, when we spend five days exploring, I have these question answers, give exercises. And I always say, it's not about start taking more pictures of yourself. It's about that woman who stands in front of the camera and what she thinks of herself. And this is, these are daily, you know, women who go to corporate, they're scientists, they're busy working day and night, and then suddenly, camera faces them and the child is coming and posing next to them and then they're like we don't want it we don't want it and then, then we don't want it when we start discovering their breakthroughs happening for women and they're like we women have said that all i didn't like was i didn't like myself all this while and they've been missing from their children's pictures uh, and i always say that that you know the best gift you can give to your children as a photographer i'm a photographer for 20 years i started being a child photography in this country but, uh, and, and I have had breakthroughs during this process. So everybody knows the story of my mom, but I don't like my, my mom left when I was six years old and I don't have a picture of her. So when you become a mom or you have a moment when you want to hold on to it, you don't have a picture. And when moms say no, and when moms say no to these pictures of hugging and children and giving them these things for the future, when they open the album, which they don't anymore, if we, if today we're so surrounded by cameras, COVID, photography, this, that, and the moms are saying more and more no to the pictures, we're not ready to come forward. And then we realize it's all because the dark circles are too long. In fact, Anna was there and she was, uh, she know, you know her, and her interview, she was saying, you know, my son just went on Zoom saying that I'm going to put concealer because she, he saw me putting a concealer on Zoom and said, even I have dark circles, so I need to go and put so that's the ripple effect on children that we are putting constantly when we talk self negative talk about our body. I've caught myself saying, oh, you know, my hair was so much better before I was a mom. And it's just not a, it's, it's not a, it's not a, 
um, thing that you do purposely, but you just avoid it, you avoid things, things have changed, and you make comments like that, but you don't know your children are listening and the ripple effect that happens in them. And that's why this project came up. One, to say to children that it's not about your image, this selfie, this power, this, that's not photography. Photography is about memories, photography is about celebrating yourself, photography is about embracing your image. And then also your mom to be not seen, you know, putting somebody in front of the body. Usually all my, like I see this, I've been 20 years a photographer. They put somebody in front of the body, the child or somebody, they will not come full body. And then uh, they try to be in that one smile, they know they look nice and then just quickly go away or stay behind the camera. Um, but what about your child or your grandchildren to know that there were other colors to it? There were times when you were holding uh, oil and there were these judas that you used to make and buns. And there were times when you were doing crazy things and you were dancing, you were wearing loose shirts and everything and just celebrating the motherhood and gifting those. So the self portrait movement is moving ahead in that direction of letting women express themselves and opening up and freeing themselves body-wise and say, and that's why I said, Maria, when I saw that in Cosmopolitan, I, this, it aligns with the project because coming boldly ahead and say, it just doesn't matter. I think these are like, this is a part of me and this is me and the kids came out and it was a great thing and so many messages goes through it. Your children embrace it and they see you like that, you know, showing yourself up, saying that and saying yes to Cosmopolitan also is a great thing. It's not that Cosmopolitan did it. It's that you feel like that. And I was very happy to be part of it. Let me tell you, no, I, I'm very happy I did that issue. I was very happy to be part of it. I mean, um, yeah, I mean, when I when I look back now, I'm like, I'm glad. Yeah, I'm, I'm so my, so my, and uh, we are being an audience, international audience here coming up. This message will will amplify through this for sure, and I will make sure because this book is called Hundred Self Portrait, Hundred Dreams, and your self portrait probably is going to be about the tummies now, and um, sending that message out because this book is getting a lot of love. I don't want to take a lot of time of yours, Maria, because you're so caught up with so many things. But <laughs> this book is called 100 Self-Portrait, 100 Dreams. And uh, all these 100 mums have dreams and they've declared their dreams here. And I want to know what's Maria's dream. Um, because we are saying that we 100 women will hold each other's dream and make this dream possible. So dream big, say it out loud. Even the biggest dream that you think is crazy of this thing, you can say it out loud. and then we can have a wrap for this interview and welcome to the book with that. Okay. So yes. I already like what you're about to say because I can already see that you're going to say something. Okay, now that she's giving me permission to go crazy, I will tell you my dreams. All right. Yeah. So I've always, always wanted to open a little cafe. And I keep saying the word little. And every time I say this to somebody, they always tell me, Maria, little does not make money. Okay. But I don't know about that. But I've always wanted a cafe that opens at 8 o'clock in the morning and shuts at 5 o'clock in the evening where you have a fixed menu. And that's about that. You know, it is, and it's a place that's not going to be cheap. Okay. It's going to be expensive because everything there will be made fresh and will be put out there fresh for the day. And uh, it's something that I've had with me for really many years and I've never yet got down to doing it because uh, I'm very frightened inside me about doing something like this and putting myself out there because um, I know me as a product, but I don't know what I make with my hands as a product, though I know it. I, I you know, there's, there's a bit of, there's a bit of, um, there's a lot of um, fear inside me about running a business. I, I don't know the B of business. I've seen a lot of things around this and some of them do it beautifully. Some of them struggle with it. And, uh, but still something that has just stayed with me through, through the years. And, uh, you know, I also know I don't want it to be in one of those really big commercial places. It has to be a place that you drive to to come if you want this, you know, and not, not something that's easily accessible and yet everybody will be there. So I know it sounds crazy. <laughs> it doesn't, it doesn't. And I just think that today that you've put it out of the universe, this must happen, put a date to it. 
because oh. it's beautiful. You know, Maria, and that's why um, that's why you find a lot of love as Maria because this is what I hear when I hear. Yes, you you know you come from a celebrity uh, background. You're a celebrity. People love you, but people say that she's so relatable. This is so relatable. A little cafe. I don't know what a five star hotel. I want a little cafe. Maria can open a five star hotel, but she wants a little cafe, and she's scared. She's scared like any other woman or a mother is to do that. And um, I, I mean, this is the beautiful part about you, Maria, and that's why holding hands with these mothers and. Uh, and you know you've just, uh, just your dream is very clearly described it's all in your head very clear right it's just action to be taken and there it would be it would be and the little cat like when you were saying it you literally took me it was like a story and you literally took me to that place i could see the sunlight i could just feel the cafe i could see a remote place i could see uh, you know people driving and maybe booking appointments and then coming only by appointments and then um, this is what it is. You don't get choices, but what I've made, we've made it. <laughs> it because I've decided this is what will be happening. Yeah. And um, and that's a beautiful dream, and that must come true. It must, even if it happens for a year, even if it happens for two years, and you've done it. Um, it's so clearly defined, Maria, and I really encourage you to to put that out because that tap on the on the on the desk like oh, all right was was like. <laughs> You know, it was, it was, it was a moment of conversation. I don't, I never used to talk like this universe and etc. But these mothers in this last uh, journey of mine has, I've met the healers, I've met all these people in this journey and they've made me believe that it's all happening because the universe wants it. So that tap was like, all right, here I come. That's what it meant. And I really wish you that and it will only happen when you make it happen, Maria. So let's make this happen. Let's make this cafe. Uh, there's no harm dreaming and drawing it and putting it in your poetry book as well. Maybe this. See, I just, I, because I told you I headed a poetry movement for 12 years in Delhi. Yeah. And I spoke to poets. So there's another poem about your cafe. And then once the poem comes out, maybe the cafe also becomes real. And we, yep. all, we all will visit that cafe with appointments. And <laughs> The menu of the day and it would be awesome because i think so many years doing what you're doing um, your food is going to be amazing for sure and uh, don't be don't fear that at all at all <laughs> i already am living your dream and i'm sure through this interview the moms are going to live that dream because all of us are living each other's dreams my dream is these hundred dreams to come true that's my dream so i'm already living your dream so welcome to the world of this hundred dreams of these mothers across the world. And um, we will we welcome you to the book. I'm waiting for your picture, for your story. And I'm also waiting to finish. I turn 40 on the 3rd of February. The 100th mom is going to happen on 3rd February on my 40th birthday, 8 a.m. Wow. And we will we have some incredible moms lined up next six months across the world again. And I will meet all of you in person because I'm done sitting across this yes. screen and fine. But I did it. I had a four month old breastfeeding him, sleepless nights when I started this project, learning about it, brought it in, uh, you know, uh, from Bangalore, I moved to Pune. Uh, uh, when I started this project, a new city with a one year old in my hand, was still breastfeeding, was still breastfeeding at the age of two. We did this, I did this sitting on the screen and we got 100 women together who have 100 dreams and who are going to come in this book and we are going to meet. I'm saying it again and again because I wake up every morning and I see my car stopping and I see Kara, I see Patty, I see Debbie, I see Lucy, I see you, I see everybody and I walk in and there's just a big 100 moms hug together. And mums are going to get honored and mums will never feel that they are just mums. That's the message of the book. Uh, I'm waiting for your poetry book. I'm waiting for your cafe. I'm living your dream, Maria. All of us will. And good luck for this dream. And I'm waiting one day to just message me. Shikha, the cafe is registered. The name is done. I'm yeah. making it happen. I'm good at that. So I am telling you that I am living it today with 100 other dreams which are coming in this book. And we are going to support this dream. At least in our mind first, and then come and visit it in physical life. Thank you so much for that. Thank you. Welcome to the book. We have a lot of people in the comment. I want to 
Um, I'm going to uh, reply to all of you. Thank you so much for either joining us. We we have a scientist. I have to say, a very humble scientist because I don't uh, speak out her name very often. But she's she works in DRDO making drones for our uh, defense. And she goes every day in the morning in COVID. Nobody stops her from going. Uh, she still has to go and uh, do her work uh, with the defense. So, Bhavni. So we salute you and we honor you anyway for this. Rashmi is here, Aarti is here. Um, everybody is just commenting. I will reply to them. Thank you, Maria. You have more work to do. And you have the work of creating your cafe now and the poetry book and the writing of the two poems that I'm waiting for. And I shall see you soon. So Thank don't you. go off. I'm just going off live for one second before I say off. Okay. I'll say bye-bye to everybody else. And okay. we are off.